Um, thank you for being here, and I'm really grateful as the host of this event for all the people that come through to celebrate wellness with us, mind, body, spirit. You know, putting us all under one roof, it's such a great experience to be able to see what's all out there available to us for our wellness needs. So, um, I'm going to be talking to you about navigating your spiritual awakening. Um, and if that is a new term to you, uh, your spiritual awakening, um, it can be so many different things. We're pretty much all in that uh, transition of really being a lot more open and being a lot more accepting and um, seeing life from the bigger picture. So rather than in the past, we kind of went through the motions, we lived our lives, we did what we had to do, and we weren't always happy. We kind of tucked away our anger. We kind of had all these life experiences, and sometimes we processed them effectively. Most often we didn't uh, because we were taught not to, or um, you know, we, we, we didn't have time to, or we just didn't know how, or we chose not to. So what we're seeing now is a whole lot of illness, a whole lot of dis-ease in our energy fields, a whole lot of dis-ease in our bodies, physical symptoms. So what's prompting us is all of that. We're seeing, okay, this doesn't feel right. There's something wrong here. So we're all kind of awakening and realizing that we've got to notice more. We've got to pay attention to our higher selves and the guidance that we're getting. Um, we're looking within a lot more and we're realizing that we do have a lot of power in our lives. So I always, I teach Reiki and I, I do a lot of, um, I call myself now, I'm trying to transition into a new brand, um, a soul seer. So that's basically what I do. When I see somebody's eyes, I can see into their soul and, and kind of give them insight as to maybe what's blocked, what's, what, how to move forward, a thought pattern you might be stuck in, stuff like that. So what I'm seeing is a lot of people that have uh, suppressed who they truly authentically are. And unknowingly, um, innocently, it happens, right? You know, we, have, we live our lives and we try to please the family members, we try to please other people, so we tuck away who we authentically are and we live a life against the grain of our soul. So what's happening is that that is energy, right? So these thoughts and these going against the grain of who we are is creating all these blocks within us. So that's creating our body to talk to us in physical symptoms. And you know, why is everybody sick? Well, what are you doing about your life? Are you happy? Are you doing what you're here for? Are you uh, fulfilling your, your goals and your intuition, you're listening to your intuition and moving forward? Um, so that's a lot of uh, part of awakening, is starting to notice everything, noticing the synchronicities, noticing who you're hanging around with and how it makes you feel, um, what you're watching, what you're listening to, and how it makes you feel. And we're in this period right now where we're, we're like owning our power and discovering, if this doesn't feel right, I don't have to do it. I don't have to be friends with this person. I don't have to follow the path of someone else's fears. Because essentially, we, we are raised by parents. Sometimes we, try, we end up having to live the unlived life of them, right? They have a lot of fears. They didn't have a lot of experiences, so they pressure us. So we are now realizing we don't have to people please. We're finding our power and we're doing what's right for us. So awakening is learning. Does this fit with me? Um, and finding your power to say no when you really want to say no. Um, it's really a passion for me right now, working with children. I've had a lot of kids just kind of coming into my life um, and doing a lot of kids workshops, and I'm realizing what I want for them is to not end up like we are. Do you know what I mean? I want them to keep their magic, I want them to keep true to them, their authentic selves, and not have society or family knock the beauty out of them. Do you know what I mean? Like that inner beauty, that um, purpose, you know, the things that kids want to do, and we always say no, but it, it goes along. I mean, there's a border a borderline with the whole safety thing. We have to keep them safe, but essentially, we have to nourish who they are, just like we have to nourish who we are. So navigating your spiritual awakening is about learning how to break free of those old belief systems that you think you have to be a certain way, or you think this person wants you to do that, so you're going to do that. Um, we're shaking all that off. It's kind of like an avalanche. We're breaking off old pieces of us, that we don't need to have anymore. We're carrying around all these bags of rocks, this luggage of our past. We're holding on to blame and resentment and guilt and all that stuff. And we're realizing that's not <coughs> feeling right anymore. It doesn't make any sense to hold on to that stuff. There's something about the past is that you can't do anything about it. The past is there. Anything that happened in your life experiences up to this point has been for your highest good whether you like to accept that or not. That's the way it is. All of the challenges, all the bad stuff that happened has been there to teach us something. And if you look at it from the spiritual perspective rather than the human ego, you can see that higher perspective version of it and you can, you can heal from it because you can accept 
the things that have gone on. And it doesn't mean you're saying, okay, all this trauma that I've suffered is okay. You're saying, I make peace with that now because I'm only here right now and I'm moving forward. So what you choose to bring with you forward is that empowering, that empowering step. That's why I love to support um, integral hosts so much is because that takes a lot of courage for a woman to leave a bad situation. And to leave a bad situation, she's honoring herself, she's keeping herself safe, her children, and she's moving forward, um, getting back on her feet the way she's meant to live, rather than under someone else's um, abuse. Um, or whatever reason they have for leaving, it doesn't matter. The, the fact is they've taken that brave, courageous step forward, and we all have the power to do that. Fear will make us stand still in our spots and not move forward freely in our being, right? So a lot of people are like, well, I want to, a lot of people I've noticed think, we'll have to come out of the spiritual closet. They're very open, they're very intuitive, but they're scared of what their family's going to think. Well, I can't bring my crystals into my home because my husband will, you know. <laughs> I'm very, I'm a very empowered person, so my husband had to adjust to that. <laughs> but when I started evolving, I started reading um, Sylvia Brown when I was about 20. I remember reading it on the, bu the bus and I was just like, oh my God, there's so much more to life than what we're, what we're taught in school and what, you know, we have this fear of death and this fear of, but then you start opening your, your mind and opening your heart and living um, from a spiritual perspective and you realize, and you realize that you've been living all this time, not for yourself. And it's so much more empowering to be able to move forward as you, right? Like how many people are doing everything for themselves? And that's not a selfish thing. I'm not saying don't take care of people because of course take care of people if that's what your heart desires. I'm saying your needs have to be met and your um, soul has to be honored. So um, a lot of times we, we don't want to move out of certain relationships because of fear. Well, what, how will my life be if I'm outside of this? How will my life be if I change the way I eat? If I've been ill for so long, how will my life be if... So then they, they create this thought that keeps them standing right still and they don't move forward. So you really have to work with your self-talk. You really have to move out those, um, that, the train of thought that keeps you stuck. So part of your spiritual awakening is seeing that. Oh, I see that I'm stuck. Because, you know, a lot of people just go through their lives and they're miserable and they complain and all this stuff. They're not seeing the good that they have. So they're creating more of the stuff to complain about. So that awareness needs to kick in. And that's what's happening with all of us. If you're here listening to some kind of talks that are helping open you up and inspire you, then you're, you're awakening. When I teach Reiki, I always say, up to this point, you've been sleeping. <laughs> because a lot of people, for me, when, when I was 20, that's when I got my first attunement. And I'm not saying Reiki was the only thing because all things came into play. I started, you know, stepping into my power and realizing who I was and honoring who I was and, and saying no when I wanted to. Um, but I found, I find, I come up into contact with a lot of people because I teach that, is that they are just in the midst of their spiritual awakening and they're really excited. And that's the thing about when you're awake. You're noticing synchronicities. You're running into people over and over again. Or you think about someone and then you see them or you get a call from them. That always has been happening, but now you're awake and you're noticing. So that makes life more fun. Life is way more fun when you're awake. <laughs> so getting connected with your intuition is a huge part of it. Because like we have all this, we have always had intuition. We're born with it. We're born good people. And then we have our life experiences that harden our hearts or we allow them to harden our hearts. And we have our life experiences that people lie to us and people, um, you know, we kind of turn off our intuition or we are afraid to trust those next steps because our intuition is always guiding us. It's that higher, that higher message that says, you like to do this? Try going that way. And then we're like, oh no, I'm scared, I'm gonna go this way. So then you're always kind of hitting your head, <laughs> not moving forward. So um, your intuition is a really good, important tool to get connected with again. And that, it takes practice. Because if you think, when, you, when we're kids and we walk into the room and our parents had just been fighting, this is just an example I always use. We walk into the room, our parents have been fighting, and they act like nothing's on, wrong, but we feel the energy of that. We feel like something's not good right here. There's something that's happened, and they say, no, no, nothing, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. So we're like, okay. So the people I trust most in the world just told me that what I was feeling was wrong. Shut down intuition. You know, so it's so simple. And even the whole Santa Claus thing, like, you know, we're lying to our kids <laughs> for years and then expecting them to trust their intuition. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't go on for longer. My kids, they were too intuitive. I just had to say, you know what? It's a lot less stressful just to tell you the truth. 
<laughs> with good intentions and a big open heart, this is why I did this. <laughs> um, if I had to start all over again, I probably wouldn't have done it at all, just because of the whole guilt I had about lying. <laughs> um, anyway, so moving out of friendships, moving out of relationships, sometimes you know you grow up and you have certain friends, and then you stay friends with them out of obligation. I've been friends with this person forever, they keep coming around, and then you've grown and you've evolved. And there's things about that aspect, about aspects of that friendship that aren't really serving you anymore. They don't feel good anymore. They don't fit. It's kind of like the puzzle of you fitting has sort of molded and now you're changing and you're evolving and the puzzle pieces don't fit anymore. Sometimes we have a hard time leaving those people behind. And it doesn't mean that we're leaving each other behind. It's not personal when you leave a relationship. It's the energy just changes and it doesn't fit. I had some friendships that abruptly end and it wasn't on my end, and I took it personally for so long. What did I say? What did I do? And then I realized, you know what? We're just done. We're just done here. We've served a purpose in each other's lives, a, a good purpose. We either learned something from one another, we helped some, we helped each other somehow, and then reason, season, lifetime, right? Not everybody's sticking around forever. You have to be able to know what feels right and what doesn't and move forward. And being spiritually awake helps you see that. So listening to the hunches like, mm, Maybe I don't want to go out for lunch with that person. <laughs> and then just, you know, you don't have to cut them off rudely. But you have, to, you have to allow yourself to grow. We grow out of jobs. We grow out of relationships of all kinds. You have to go with it and trust in those steps, right? So does anyone have any experiences that they've had where they're kind of like, I don't really get it, what's happening to me, that they want to share or have, um, have you want, to, want some kind of insight on? Anybody? <laughs> no? Has anyone been stuck in a job that they really, really didn't like and that they wanted to move forward but they didn't for fear of not having that income, not having that security? It happens to all of us, right? There's always like a job change or something and we're like, oh, it's kind of comfortable here, but really it's not true to who you authentically are. So taking that step is kind of intimidating. So that's, I like to teach people to not focus on the whole picture. And I always use the example from The Secret when they say, when you're driving at night, your headlights only show you so far. And then you drive a little further and they show you a little bit further. And then you drive a little further. So you have to trust in that journey, right? You're, you're on a journey. We're here to learn and grow and all this stuff. We're here on this earth, that's school for us, really. Um, and then we go home. <laughs> uh, and then we kind of preview it all and then we come back if we need to <laughs> and work out our, our um, things that we didn't finish this time. So um, your spiritual awakening means many things. I remember uh, a, lot of, a lot of times saying, that's so weird, when I first started waking up. Um, and I am writing a book about this topic, actually, and one of the chapters is, no, you probably don't have lice. <laughs> because I remember my head was always tingly, and I would always get people to check me for life. <laughs> because your crown is opening. So you're getting more of a connection to source, right? So you're gonna feel that energy and sometimes it feels like you have bugs in your hair. So I remember that and then, and then along with the that's so weird is like you're, when you start noticing synchronicities because I see groups of friends come and they learn and they are taking the classes and everything like that. And then I hear them talking like, oh my God, that's so weird because things are happening and they're noticing it and I laugh every time because that it's not weird. It's just, and I remember when I first started opening up I was calling my mom all the time because she was the only person who understood what it was I was experiencing. <laughs> and now there's a lot more of us. <laughs> um, but I would call her and we would talk about the things that have gone on and be like, that's so weird. So I just think it's hilarious because you think it's weird because it's just, it's the way it is. But you think it's weird because you've been kind of like blinded to it or blinded by it, not blinded by it, blind to it for all this time, right? So now you're starting to notice. So that's exciting. You're getting excited with your friends and then you, you have to trust in when you see a workshop that you want to go to, when you meet someone on the street that you feel like you want to talk to, just go up and go with it and trusting in your guidance, right? Because that's going to take you to that next step. And that's where the steps are. You don't notice them as steps while you're taking them, but that's what they are, right? So coming out of your comfort zone too, a lot of people just kind of say, mm, I'm going to stay like this. I've got fibromyalgia, I've got this and that, so I'm just going to stick that and stay there because that's what I'm used to. And it's hard to say, okay, I can actually heal something. I can heal something if I change the way I think about it. I can heal something if I change my thoughts um, on the, the generations of thought patterns that have come to me. If you think about your families, 
and the way your mom thought or the way your grandmother thought and different things and blame and resentment and all that stuff, it comes down the line energetically. It's, you know, I always talk about heredity as not a physical thing. It's energy. It's energetics is what I call it. I don't know if that's a word, but <laughs> I use it. <laughs> um, so the energetics of the family system, the generations, when you work on yourself, you're healing the generations in front of you and you're healing the generations behind you. I always say when you work on the mama tree, you heal the branches, your kids. So it's, it's, we have that power within us. And now that you're awakening, awakened or awakening, and it's a constant evolution. So I could have awakened at 20 years old. Here I am, skip to 38, I'm still awakening. There's still things happening. But I'm so aware and in touch with who I truly authentically am that I can navigate my life a lot easier because I know what works and I know what doesn't. You know when you're invited to an event and you're like, oh, I should go even though I don't want to, I'm not interested, say no. <laughs> it's so empowering. And then you're like, oh, then, because if you think you, you say yes, and then you want, you, you have to go to that event, and it's on your mind, and you're like, oh, no, I really don't want to go. Think about how, what that's doing to your energy, right? You're just kind of wasting good energy. <laughs> Where you could be like, oh, there's an art workshop I want to sign up for, let's go to that, let's, and take whoever wants to go. It's all about just listening. Listening to the whispers of your soul. Um, listening to being very hyper aware of your surroundings. Um, it gets you in a place of total peace when you can really release what's gone on behind you and accept it for what it is and bring you right here to this moment. I'm here right now. I accept what happened in the past. I acknowledge it. I accept it. And I'm, I'm going to leave it be. Letting go is a little challenging for some people because mm -hmm. it's hard to let go. You got cut cords and you got to <laughs> shedding them. <laughs> all that stuff. But if you leave it be, then you have that peace of knowing that I've left it be. I don't need to carry that with me. Leave it. And then you can go forward mm -hmm. in your spiritual harmony, right? And feel good about it. I could chatter on for a long time. So, oh, I don't have a clock. Does anybody have the time? My phones are set. One, one clock. Okay, so the next speaker is coming up soon. So, um, any questions? Because I can offer any insights. Nobody wants to ask a question. You didn't come to I'm this event with a question yesterday. How do you leave it be? I'm kind of like a dog with a bone where I say, okay, I'm not going to deal with it anymore. I'll just bury it over here. And then before I know when I'm back there, digging it up and thinking about it and ruminating. It, we're a work in progress, right? Okay. So it's a constant um, catch yourself in those thoughts mm -hmm. when you go back to that and just realize, I'm here now. What am I choosing to do? Am I choosing to dwell on this or am I choosing to be happy? And then you'll be like, well, I feel silly choosing to dwell on this. So then, you <laughs> and I'm not saying pretend like nothing ever happened. Own it and honor it for what it was, for the, for the life lesson that it was. And also blame, taking ownership of things. So a lot of us blame our families for everything. Like, oh, my parents divorced when I was this age and my dad did this and my mom. And yes, they all did that. these crazy things and these loving things and all kinds of things, but we have the power to do with it what we chose. You realize, I chose those parents. Before I came here into this body, I chose those parents for those specific challenges so I can learn and grow. If you're like, damn, my parents did this, my parents did that, you're not honoring your soul. You're realizing, mm, you're trying to push that aside that it, like it wasn't a life lesson, it was something somebody else did to you. So if you could take that blame away and say, okay, well, I see why it happened, not why did that happen to me? But the, why did that happen to me? You know, you shift the way you think about it. It can help you leave it be. Because you're like, okay, well, that's why that happened. And you don't even have to figure it all out. You just have to trust that it happened for a reason. And you're here right now. So when we blame other people for what happened, we're giving away our power. How many of you have digestive problems? <laughs> Some do. <laughs> <laughs> so that, this is your power center. This is when we blame other people. And you know, people, people are gonna be who they are and they're gonna do what they do and say what they say and you have only power over you and how you respond to it. I always say, are or are? Am I gonna react to this or am I gonna respond to this? Am I gonna carry this around with me or am I gonna leave it be? Like it's just choices. Mm -hmm. Life is all about choices. You're making choices every single day in every encounter you make. So, you know, even when someone comes at you with some kind of an attack, I'm going to use an example. I went to a dinner once and I was attacked while I was eating. I was like not attacked physically, but just you are this and you are that. And why don't you want? And she wanted to debate with me. She wanted me to fight back. She wanted me to debate and to um, 
explain to her why I think the way I think and why and she was trying to explain to me why she thinks the way she thinks and I was like you do you <laughs> I'm choosing peace in this situation I don't feel like I want to beat you over the head with who I am and why I think the way I think and she wanted to debate because some people unhealed trauma attracts the drama right so they want to have that drama so they come at you and they're trying to create that and you can choose peace like she was coming at me, my dog, my kids were there, and um, so I was, and I was so proud of the way I handled it because I was choosing to have a peaceful response to it, and she hated it. It drove her crazy. <laughs> she, she was so used to having people challenge her, and while she was challenging them, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to be okay with how you feel about me because that's not my business. I do me, and you do you, and that was it. And I'm peaceful about it. Do you have a question? What about conflict within yourself? Kind of conflict within that. yourself is something that happens on a daily basis to all of us, right? So that conflict, so I'm glad you mentioned that because that was when, remember earlier I said in, intuition and ego? So ego comes from a place of holding you back, wanting you to worry about what you're going to do, want, worrying about and, and just the fear. It's a low vibration. So it's like down here with ego, with greed and, and shame and guilt and all those lower vibration thoughts. So our higher self is guiding us to do what we want it to do, or what our soul wants to do, right? And so it's giving you the great ideas, it's giving you the call this person, it's giving you take this workshop, it's giving you all that great stuff that you get excited about. As soon as you start thinking about it too much, analyzing it, and, and you start to question, do you really want it? You have to act right away when intuition's giving you messages because you will your ego will talk you out of it. And then you'll be mad at yourself. You think of how many people are depressed right now because they're going against the grain of who they authentically are. They want to do something, but that's they're not doing it. So they're mad at themselves. So they have that inner dialogue that's just upsetting them even more. <laughs> yeah. So how do you quiet your mind in order to think about, because it's like, oh, I should be doing this, I should be doing this. And it doesn't matter how quiet you try and set your mind, you still got all these little things going on. So how do so you? So I am not a quiet mind <laughs> because I've got so many things. Yeah. But I have to, to focus. How? And and I used to stress myself out trying to meditate because I'm like, why can't I follow someone's voice right. in the meditation? Because I couldn't quiet my mind. I'd be like, what? How much time is left? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just it's not for everyone, right? Some people can do the guided meditations. I leave them all the time, but I can't listen to them <laughs> myself unless I'm falling asleep at night because my my higher self will listen to it. So the quieting of the mind is a, it's not a one size fits all. You can't, you can't expect meditation to work the same way for you as it does for someone else. What I have found was being out on a walk with my dog is my best form of meditation. Because I'm walking, I have no one to chat with. Well, I can chat with him, but he's, <laughs> he's more interested in other things. And I, I'm just walking and I'm paying attention to my steps and I'm doing affirmations sometimes. I'm taking, I'm well aware of my breathing, I'm noticing the trees, I'm noticing things. So that's one form of meditation because when you're doing that, you're being present. And, that, and that's when we dwell on the past and we think about the future, we're putting our energy out there. When we're right here right now is when we can really be and, and hear that, those messages of guidance for us. So taking a walk out in nature or sitting in your bathtub listening to some, you know, some binaural beats or some, some kind of relaxing music. Um, doing the dishes is a meditation for some. I get a lot of insights when I'm chopping vegetables and doing the dishes because your left brain's busy doing the things that you're doing with your hands, your right brain's listening, your right brain's open. So catch yourself, you know, and, and understand what works for you because it's not going to work the same way. I, you know, some people can stare at a candle. Some people do it in yoga. Meditation is, is just different for everyone. You just have to find what way works for you best. Yes? How do you like get rid of the self-doubt or whatever? Like, you know, if I use a pendulum, I don't trust what I get. Or like I took Reiki one, but I'm not sure I'm doing it right. So I learned this. I, I'm so doubtful. Yeah, so I learned this from Wayne Dyer. So that's funny because um, I don't want to forget to answer your question. I was going to just kind of side around <laughs> for a second. Um, so when we, when we try to do something, 
we're trying to, so our ego is trying to do it a certain way. So with Reiki, I know this is a lot because I have a lot of level ones that come through my classes and they're like, am I doing it right? I don't feel like I've got the same kind of energy as you and, and they compare and they think that they have to do it a certain way when really they need to acknowledge their ego is trying to do it and then they need to step out of the way and allow it to happen. You allow it to happen and not try to control it because when you're trying to control it, then your ego is taking over. For this talk, I was thinking, I haven't written anything down. I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> and I would have the talk going on in my head. And then I was like, every time I go to, to speak to a group of people, I'm asking for guidance. I'm asking the higher ups, universe, God, creator, source, divinity, whatever you want to call it. I ask for guidance. Show me, use me, guide me. My hands are your hands. My heart is your heart. My voice is your voice. Show me, use me, guide me. And then I would try to write everything down. So my ego was like, but I need to know what I'm going to say, so I'm going to write all this down. Well, it started to be where I keep dropping that paper. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I don't think I'm supposed to be reading off this paper. <laughs> and then one time I totally forgot my paper at home. And then I called my husband, can you take a picture of my paper so that I have it? Because I wasn't trusting my higher self to give the messages. I was just asking for it. And then I was trying to control it. So I have to be intuitively guided. So the things that I say to a group are going to be the, I could talk on this exact topic and say totally different things to another group. It's whoever is here to hear the message and to have an aha moment or to have a, oh my God, yes, or a, oh, what the heck is she talking about? Whatever is what's supposed to happen. So I have to trust my intuition is guiding me to say whatever I need to say to you. So I get out of my way. You know what I mean? If I would have written it all down, my ego would be telling me things. It's the same with people who write books. They need to channel that information. When I do readings in my sessions, I'm not telling them from my perspective what they need to know. I'm channeling it. So I'm, when I write everything down during my Reiki sessions, and then we discuss it at the end, it's like I'm looking at it for the first time because it wasn't my messages that I was giving. It was from spirit. So I have to trust. You have to get out of the way and let it happen. Allowing is part of your awakening. You really have to get, get familiar with just, oh, are you catching myself trying to control this? I'm going to set myself aside and allow spirit to work through me. Because primarily we're spirit. We're human secondary. And the human has the ego. And the ego, I, I believe, we should see it as our ally, not as our enemy. Because we have to say, okay, I see you there, ego, trying to get me to stand still and not move forward in my peace and happiness. <laughs> Thank you for showing me what I'm afraid of. Thank you for showing me what I need to heal. And then acknowledge and move forward. Can I, can I ask that? Yeah. Um, I, I, I realized that when I took Reiki 1, I was acknowledging that I needed to heal. And then when, when I did Reiki 2, the healing process started. And then when we do great shares, everyone's got their own flavor. So mm -hmm. everyone has their own way of how they um, channel the Reiki. So then it's not that you're doing it wrong, it's just that you do it your own way. Well, and it's like anyone ways. who does anyone who does readings has a has a tool. They use either just they sit there and they let spirit speak through them, or they use oracle cards and they use that as their tool, or they use a pendulum and they use that as their tool. Or for me, I use Reiki as my tool. It's, you have to find what fits for you, what feels right. You should never force it. If something works for someone else, it may not work for you, and that's okay. Because we're all, like, like Kim said, we have our own flavor. Do you have a question, Rachel? Well, how do you know when you get a thought in your head if it's a thought or if it's your intuition? How do you know? If that thought is fear-based, if, if it's like an act of revenge, or if it's a guilt, or if it's a... If it doesn't make, if it doesn't feel good, that's ego. If you get an idea, like when Paul Bashara and I got the idea for the wellness fair, he called me seven years ago and said, "Hey, what, what do you think about doing a wellness fair?" I'm like, "I'm all over it," and I was super excited. And I knew it's a lot of work. <laughs> this isn't just happening. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a lot of work, but I trusted because I was excited about it. It was meant to be. Do you know what I mean? You get excited about that in, that idea. Even if it scares you, you're excited about it. You know? It will never guide you to do something harmful to anyone. It will never guide you to hold on to an emotion um, that doesn't serve you. It's always a higher feeling. And, and with intuition, you feel it, you see it, you hear it, you know it. You don't know how you know it, you just know it. That's how intuition works. 
it's not all gonna come in a vision for everyone, because not everyone sees, not everyone's clairvoyant. Sometimes it comes a couple of different ways. You have to get to know what, how your intuition is speaking to you. Yeah. Um, so as you heal your chakras and you kind of make your way up, is that like, because you're always on the journey, but then when you make it to the crown, is that, is that kind of when you start to get closer to the awakening, or just you just no. never know? No, it's all happening as soon as you make the decision to wake up. And it's not like you have to spend all this time on your root chakra and then spend your time. It's, it's ever happening. So I'm a Reiki master. It doesn't mean that my life is perfect and I know everything. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't healed everything. Because sometimes life brings triggers that help me to heal something from the past. Sometimes my kids trigger me and I realize, oh, that's not them. There's something within me that I need to heal. So it's a constant work. You're a constant work in progress. So being open is the first step, right? And being accepting and appreciating and honoring that guidance that you're getting. It's, it's, you can't just be like, oh, I'm healed, I've got to the crown. <laughs> because there's always things that life experiences come at you, they continue to come at you, but you learn that enlightenment on how you respond to it. Like with, with that person that kind of attacked me at that dinner and I, I could have fought back, I could have defended, but what good would that have been doing? You can't, um, I saw an expression the other day that I was gonna use. You can't teach someone, you can't help someone understand from their level of perspective, do you know what I mean? So that's why I left it be. Like, I'm sorry you feel that way, that's your thing, not mine. <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing me. So as you become better you, when you come up against these problems, you just deal with it better. Yeah. You shoot love at them rather than <laughs> like just care bear stare all of this good energy because it really really helps to diffuse it it helps to transmute it you know and you feel better and you feel better like i, I could have let that bother me for for months it did come up a couple times because she's in my family <laughs> so she, i have presented with this person every once in a while but if i don't let it I'm still like, hey, how's it going? Like, it's okay that we just don't have to hang out. <laughs> yeah. So your spiritual awakening is an ongoing process. Navigating it is getting into your intuition, getting in touch with your, your inner self and trusting. Oh my God, trusting. Because we get all the messages, it's a matter of trusting on what to do with it. One action step at a time. We don't have to intimidate ourselves with knowing the whole path, because what's the point? <laughs> We have to appreciate every step of the way, right? So does that feel good? Do you feel good? It does. Yeah. Okay. Care rest here. Thank you so much, guys, for coming, <laughs> for enjoying all the vendors, and for coming to hear the speakers. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.